Hi, my name is Courtney and I am the IB program coordinator here at Western University. Um, we've been running a speaker series for the month of December. For today's session, we actually have um, with us today, Beth Owen, and Beth is the co-founder, CEO, and director at Searchality. So Western has partnered with Searchality, and I'm so happy to welcome Beth here today to discuss this opportunity with everyone and to learn a little bit more about Searchality. So Beth, thank you so much for taking time today to um, spend with us and uh, for us to learn a little bit more about Searchality. Yeah, you're welcome and um, thanks for having me and uh, for those of you that are attending that's great and hopefully a few more a few more of you will uh, have a chance to look at the recording. Um, I, it's funny, I feel like I spend a lot of my time talking to schools and not nearly as much of my time talking to teachers and of course recruitment, um, which, I'm a, which I'm passionate about, recruitment is very much about both sides of the equation. You can't have, um, you can't have a great recruitment process without, without good schools and also of course without good teachers. So um, we've been working with Western for almost a year as they've been uh, running their, their IBEC program and getting their IBRI certification program up and running. Um, and I'm just excited to kind of share what it is that we do for international school teachers in general. And of course, IB teachers are, uh, are a big part of that. Um, I'm gonna very much try and not make this all about uh, searchality and, and what we've built, but it is important for me uh, kind of towards the end of the second half of the presentation that I'm gonna share with you to just let you know what it is we do and, um, and how we help both teachers and schools and then as participants of the IBEC program, uh, specifically what, what we're here to do for you and how we're here to help you. So if it's okay with you, I'm, gonna, I'm going to share my screen. Um, and so somebody who's not on mute, if you can tell me when you can see that. Perfect, that looks good. Okay. Um, okay, uh, so today, just we don't have a long time, obviously, I feel like I could talk about this for hours, but um, I'm just gonna talk to you for those of you who may not know about some of the challenges, specific challenges that face recruitment in international school. I'm gonna touch a little bit on what schools and teachers on both sides are looking for. I know I think the next speaker in this series is gonna probably go into that a little more depth. And then, as I said, who we are and what we're here to do for you. And then very happy, of course, to take any questions uh, at the end. So international school teacher recruitment today is, you know, it's different to what it was 40 years ago. It's an extremely global and mobile workforce. We have these fabulous examples of the Australian who's teaching at a British school in China who decides to move to Brazil and, you know, the complications that are, uh, around that, how do those people find each other? The volume is really up. I'll talk about the numbers, but you know, it's thousands and thousands of teachers every year. Um, and with that is this huge amount of data, um, you know, all the data involved in recruitment. And again, I'll, I'll speak to you a little bit more about that. And international school recruitment is, you know, it's a pretty unique, oh, sorry. It's a pretty unique uh, space in that you know, there's 90,000 teachers that are the 90,000 vacancies that happen annually, which is, sorry, I don't know why this is advancing. Mm. Did not do this in the rehearsal. I don't know why it is. <laughs> always the way. <laughs> always the way. I'm just going to pause it and see if that helps. Um, so yeah, there's 90,000 vacancies which come up annually across all the schools and that's roughly, it's a little over 150 international schools, uh, 150 countries that have with international schools in them and it's almost 10,000, in fact now a little bit over 10,000 international schools that are competing for that school of staff. So these are pretty big numbers. Um, what's really interesting about this industry compared to private sector, compared to almost any other, is that you know, teachers are all starting on, you can say one day. I know it's not exactly one day and we have Southern Hemisphere schools and Northern Hemisphere schools, but the vast majority of teaching positions are all starting at the, you know, sometime in August um, for an August start or a September start. So it just puts this crazy pressure on uh, this few month peak hiring season. Um, in terms of the volume, what we found is that 
for some of the bigger schools that I guess you'd think about destination or target schools in Asia and the Middle East, if they advertise a job, they get somewhere between 150 and 300 applications per position, which is a lot to deal with if they're advertising 40, 50 positions that year. And then there are some amazing schools that are in maybe second cities in China or a brand new school in Singapore or uh, somewhere in South America or you know in Japan and there are smaller schools but they're amazing and they've got a lot of money and they've got a you know sort of a great head but nobody's heard of them so they'll advertise a job and literally they'll have no applicants um, and it's a real shame for you know it, it makes it a, a big challenge for people to find each other. I just put at the bottom there it's also a, a little chart showing the growth um, the growth in this so ISC projects, and that's the um, International Schools uh, Council, they project that by 2027, so that's, you know, now only seven years away, there's going to be nearly a million teachers staffing international schools around the world. So these issues of scale are, are only going to get bigger. It's a, it's, it's a huge field. And so now in 2020, what is it that schools are looking for when they're hiring a teacher? Of course, there is the foundation of kind of qualifications and experience, and I'll talk a little bit more, more about that. Really important to schools at the moment is, is cultural fit, and with that comes commitment. I guess what I mean by that is, you know, they don't want to, of, of course, an initial contract is two years, um, generally, for international school teachers. They don't want to be replacing teachers every two years. It's a, you know, there's a huge cost, both financially and time and whatever. So they're looking for teachers who are gonna come and stay for, you know, four, five, six years is really the optimal time. So they, they're they taking a bit of time right at the beginning at recruitment to make sure that it's a good fit uh, on both sides. They're looking for references. There's nothing kind of more critical in some ways. Of course, you know, of course you need a, a, a teaching degree and certification and some of those qualifications are important, but you know, no matter how well you interview, um, what your last employee says about you, what your last head or head of department, um, what that reference says is really critical for schools. And then finally, it's this little value add piece. So what are you gonna bring? Um, and I don't mean, yeah, I guess I don't mean they're not trying to get every last uh, kind of drop of blood out of you or anything, but it's really they want, you know, teachers are people and schools are communities and places. So you know, are, are you gonna come, are you gonna run a play or, you know, a drama club or are you gonna, you know, help coach a sport or, um, you, you know, run a spring fair or, you know, what's your passion? What's your interest? Are you gonna start a surfing club? Are you gonna, you know, what are you gonna join? What are you gonna be part of? So international schools are incredibly important um, kind of bedrocks in, in a lot of, uh, overseas communities and so that value add that, that teachers bring um, is is really an important part. What should you as a teacher be looking for and I have these conversations all the time it's funny I find I mean many of us if we're looking for jobs and teachers it's very you know I feel especially true is really focused on will I get the job you know are they gonna like me are they gonna want to hire me can I get the job you really need to remember as well, you're, you know, this is a big decision for you. You're going to go and live and work somewhere for a few years and, and you know, you want to be happy, you want to be fulfilled, you want to feel valued. And um, so what should you be looking for when, when you're doing the interviewing, if you will, from, from your side of things? Um, it's becoming more and more a catchphrase among schools about looking after teacher well-being. Um, and when you're speaking to a head, to ask them, kind of what are the, or whoever you're interviewing with, what, how important is teacher well-being in their community? It's all very well and good for you to give everything you've got, which you're, you're gonna do for the job, but are they gonna look after you as well? And, um, you know, heads at good schools, and it doesn't matter how big or small, uh, they, they do have a, a, a program, I guess, for looking after teacher well-being. Salary is the obvious thing, and we can see in the reports that this is the most important, uh, you know, this is one of the most important things. You just have to, it can get very complicated when you're, um, when you're looking for an interviewing at international schools because, you know, do they pay your salary before tax or after tax? Um, maybe the salary looks low, but all of a sudden, if you look and see that housing and flights and health insurance and all kinds of things are, are given as kind of in-kind benefits that actually 
you know, a, a lower salary isn't that low after all when you factor all of those things in. Um, if you're a teacher who's going overseas, working internationally with children, of course, you know, having free tuition, which is what a lot of schools offer for teacher kids, is a massive benefit. Um, so it's really important to kind of have an understanding about what those standards are. And, and if you're looking for your first international school uh, position and you're not experienced in this, I strongly urge you to get some help um, from somebody who's sort of on your side and, and uh, a little bit of unbiased and experienced help for you to help guide you through the process because uh, some schools pay in local salary, which can be confusing. Like I say, there's always taxation issues. Uh, you have to be careful if you're coming out of Canada about what that means for your Canadian income tax. It really can get complicated. Um, so sort of, yeah, be, be very informed when you're starting to look at those types of things. And then I mentioned this on the school side. It's also really important on your side as a teacher that you're going somewhere where you have a good cultural or, or philosophical fit. Um, you know, coming from an IB perspective, even if a school might not be an IB certified school in all three programs, and you're still happy to go and work there, make sure it's an inquiry-based program that their curriculum is gonna be something that you can invest in and be passionate about and, and you know, that, that you're gonna be able to use your, your training that you've received and, and really teach in a way that you believe in. And just as well, you know, sort of the, how the teachers, what, what's the culture among the teachers, the culture among the staff and families at the school, it's, you know, it's a, it's a really good thing to look into. Um, and one of the best ways to find out about all of this is to use the school reviews process. There's some great sites out there, tests and um, uh, the ISR, the International School Review site, have really up-to-date solid reviews. And it's, um, it's nice because there's a balance in, in those sites. Sometimes you can go to review sites and, uh, you know, it's sort of very one-sided and squeaky wheels, but um, there's some very, very good balanced school review sites, which I would strongly encourage people to use. So when schools and teachers are looking for each other, how on earth do they find each other? Um, and again, schools are a kind of special place. So, you know, if you're out in the general world of, um, of recruitment, on the bottom left there, you have um, sort of LinkedIn and Monster Jobs and Indeed and, sorry, um, i to do the same thing. Um, you sort of have general job finding sites on the bottom left. Those are okay for schools and teachers, but not great. Guardian Jobs has a lot of good ads, um, and depending on the countries, some people use Monster and LinkedIn. Um, if you worked in the private sector, uh, like I've done a lot, on the right-hand side at the bottom there where you see that little pig is white truffle, there's some really great um, platforms to help you find, uh, to help you find a good, job in whatever field you might need, might, uh, computer engineering or legal or financial services, but that hasn't really existed for schools. Up on the top left, those are probably some names that are familiar to you. Search Associates, TeachAway, uh, Teacher Horizons, if you've been looking for international school jobs or done any recruitment in international schools. Those are some of the more um, traditional, I guess, uh, options for schools and teachers to find each other. Those are, those are probably the big ones. Um, but they're quite traditional sort of job boards and recruiters. So either ads are posted that teachers can apply to, or um, there's sort of services that you can sign up for and put your CV up and schools can use them to, um, to search for candidates and, and search for kind of suitable CVs, but it's a pretty manual process. Uh, and then where I've put us is, where I put Searchality is up in the right hand corner because there wasn't really, the reason that I started the company is because there wasn't really anyone doing this um, when we started this a couple of years ago, which is to take those, that kind of specialized approach of using a platform and using technology um, to really help the search process. I'm gonna play a little video for you. It should take a couple of minutes. I'm hoping the sound is okay. I tested it, um, but anyway, apologies if it's not, but even without the sound, it should be okay.
I hope that I, I think the little video kind of explains it maybe better than than I could uh, by talking it through. Um, we've kind of really changed how um, we've done it a little bit differently. Instead of paying for an ad and paying for recruiters, we've kept it really simple for both schools and candidates, which is to just say there's a subscription, you both sign up, uh, you fill out your beautiful profiles, which has all of the details that you would like included um, on both sides. And for teachers, instead of having to apply to jobs one by one by one by one, we apply to everything for you. If, um, you know, if you've put out a list of countries that you'd like to live in and the type of job you're looking for we will apply you to every job that kind of fits that uh fits that profile and it's the same with the schools um we do charge a, a small annual subscription fee for candidates which is 30 euros a year we started offering it for free and what we found as you can imagine uh which made sense is that once candidates got jobs they weren't kind of updating their profiles and so that meant that they were matching for jobs with schools when they weren't actually available so uh, we needed to change that. But the good news is, is that for um, anybody participating in the Western IBEC, um, the IB certificate, then there is discounts or it's even free for new teachers. Um, so who are we? We're, I'm the founder and CEO. My name is Beth. I'm originally from Canada, from Ottawa, but um, I now live here in the UK, uh, which is where we built that, built, uh, built the platform. Uh, my co-founders, Paris and Allison, are, um, they are now based here. They were based in Dubai for the first few years that we were doing this. And then I have a, a couple of former school heads on our advisory board who've been very helpful in both getting the platform built and then also helping our schools um, with adoption. So our team is long and deep in, uh, in international schools. It's been certainly part of my life for 20 years. I both attended international schools, my kids attend them, and my husband is a career, uh, career international school head as well. So um, this is something that I'm very passionate um, about because recruitment for schools feels like a problem for which there's um, a growing need for solutions. So I'm gonna stop it there, I think, and I'm very happy to take questions. I hope all of that was clear. I feel like I've just been talking and talking. So I enjoyed that video, I must say. <laughs> I really liked that video. Um, but oh, feel good. Free to ask questions. <laughs> Thanks, Beth, for sticking around to help answer. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Beth. Uh, my name is Jasmina. Yeah, Hi. thank you for a great presentation. Um, I was just, I had um, two questions and I don't know how um, relevant they are, but I hope you can direct me in the right direction. Um, I know that some countries, or I've heard through the grapevine, that some countries bring in international school teachers 
through a working holiday visa, like, um, like New Zealand or Australia, and I'm not sure, I didn't see, I don't think I saw it in the presentation where the countries that you place in, but if you could speak to if that is true or if there's a way around it. So it's, it's a really, so the right to work, which I mentioned in the, is, is a huge issue for schools. If you, you know, the, the two big ones for um, schools when they're hiring teachers are the right to work and child protection. Um, because for more and more countries, the child safety and child protection issue, so kind of police records and all of that, which among international school teachers can be really challenging if you've been living all over the world for the past 10 years gaining police records. So those two things, the right to work and the, and the child protection, so we include that on our profile. You know, it's generally, Jasmina, it's generally the responsibility, the school takes on the responsibility of getting the work visas for teachers what we are seeing our schools doing is expressing preferences of nationalities. So we allow them to do it on their profile where they say ideally they would like EU passports, American passports, Canadian passports, whatever. And because they know to get work visas that either it's cheaper or just a heck of a lot faster for them. Um, so it's kind of, it's, a, it's an unfortunate reality is that as all of these that we have a school in here in Europe and Lithuania that at the moment is only hiring from US from the US because of the dual tax agreement that Lithuania has with the US that they can only really afford US teachers because of the tax situation so we allow schools we don't want to waste anybody's time that's the important thing if the fact of the matter is that a school in Australia or New Zealand can only hire from commonwealth countries or could only hire from certain passports we at least want them to state that up front so that applicants aren't wasting their time applying for a job that they're not gonna get. Does that? Yeah, I, what about, I've heard that like you have to be under 35 in order to get those working holiday visas or under 30. So for different countries, it's different. Uh, the holiday visas are generally for youth, but that's, I gotta tell you, it's not a super legal thing to do. They shouldn't be bringing people in. I know that I've, I've heard the same as you, that um, that some schools are. Uh, it's not a long-term or sustainable thing because I think it's, in most places it's only 12 months. They can't take okay. the holiday working visa for more than 12 months. So they have to convert after that. I also think there's been a bit of an increase of that with COVID that, that backlogs that first of all, people are, um, there's been a lot of urgency around recruitment. Teachers have either not been able to um, meet their contracts. So imagine a teacher was hired to go and work in Singapore and then all of a sudden they can't get from where they were to Singapore and they have to say, I'm really sorry, I can't accept that position. And so the school in Singapore is saying, oh my gosh, I need somebody urgently. And they're taking more, I've heard of more of those shortcuts being taken in the past six, eight months for this hiring season than okay. I'd ever before. And I think that has something to do with it. Normally it's not really cricket, I have to say. Okay, good to know. Yeah. I do have a second question for you, but I'll just let anybody ask a question before then. Um, perhaps I could ask a question which maybe leads uh, on from the previous question. Um, I think a lot of people studying the course are in Canada looking for jobs outside of Canada. But uh, what about people that are outside of Canada wanting to go to Canada? How um, any uh, advice or information about that? So I'm going to pass that one to Courtney because I don't have and like it's we work primarily with international schools as opposed to schools in Canada. So I don't know, Courtney, are you guys placing people in schools in Canada? Um, so our program in particular is not, but we do have many IB schools in Canada. Um, Damon, what I'll do is I will reach out to one of our instructors. Um, she's she's worked um, domestically and abroad, and she can um, provide you a little bit more context around maybe her experiences um, working in particular schools within IB um, in Canada. But we do have many Canadian schools um, that do offer IB, so that is a that is a possibility. Yes. Thank you. So I think go ahead, Jasmina, if you had your second question. Thanks. Um, I think this falls under right to work again, and I'm not really sure if, um, if, this, if this is for you or if you should direct me somewhere else, but I've heard again through the grapevine that countries or schools, when an international teacher arrives, will do a health check, um, like a full medical checkup. And uh, I'm not sure if that's true, and I'm wondering what they're looking for or not looking for. 
So it's a really interesting one and it's actually in, uh, if you sign on to, if you sign up with us, you'll see that we ask to take a little health statement because so many countries do look for it. And so I lived in Vietnam and Indonesia uh, and uh, for 15 years across, I went back and forth across those two countries. And in both of those, we were required to get a health check in order to get a working visa. Um, it's an interesting one. So uh, they're looking for communicable diseases. They're looking for tuberculosis. They're looking for HIV. They're looking for, you know, um, you can look to see, I, I don't know what the Middle East, the Middle East also requires a health check. Um, there's very little that will invalidate you except for something extremely serious. Uh, which you're supposed to declare, but it's essentially, um, you know, for us to continue to get our work visas in Vietnam every two years, we had to, we had to undergo a health check. Um, and it's really just to make sure that, yeah, that we're not um, bringing anything into the country. I think, you know, I think what, it, like anything else, a foreigner working in a country is taking a job from a local person, if that makes sense. So there's several things that we need. We need that, you know, we need the degree, we need the, the health check just to make sure that we're we're not taking a, a job from a able-bodied person um so yeah you can google for the different countries thailand has one many many countries have one not all can china definitely has one not all countries have them but you can look and see what those requirements are if you have any concerns about it and the school by the way helps with the schools help with all of that um yeah. okay yeah that's yeah, wonderful the last two places where I worked was China and now in the Middle East. And uh, when I went to China, it was a full day medical check from top to toe, including sonars. And uh, it was quite unbelievable. And uh, It's pretty cool though, I, right? Well, you're just sort of hoping that they don't find anything by <laughs> surprise. But you're supposed to do a medical check before you go there and you're supposed to send forms that you've been uh, checked, so uh, eliminating that. But um in the Middle East here, we, all had, we had blood tests and um, I think they're checking mainly for HIV, but we had one colleague that was actually sent home after three days and he tested for hepatitis. And um, he said he's had it for 25 years and he's worked in other places and no one ever mentioned it. And um, he came here and he was actually sent home. He subsequently went to Cambodia. So I guess there they don't test for it or don't mind it. But... Um, yeah, a lot of the places are doing this uh, health check. Before I worked in South America and there was nothing. Okay, well, thank you both Beth and Damon. Mm -hmm. All right, well, it's one o'clock. If we don't have any other questions um, or feel free to ask any of those last minute questions that you do have. Um, I will also say as well that um, our next session is on Tuesday and that will be with Dr. Glenn Odland. Um, so Dr. Odland has been a, um, has led schools both in Canada and Singapore. Um, he was a head of school. So this is an opportunity um, to maybe get some tips and tricks and advice um, from someone who did uh, do the hiring and, and maybe what he was looking for. Um, and Damon, he would also have contacts as well um, with IB schools in Canada. So that might be a great one to attend as well for you. Um, thanks everybody for attending. Thank you, Beth, so much.